My name is Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller, and I was the only officer in the entire American coalition fired in the debacle of Afghanistan fallout. Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller is an infantry officer who's been in the Marine Corps for 17 years. He received the Bronze Star for combat actions in Fallujah in 2007. In June of 2021, he became the battalion commander for the Advanced Infantry Training Battalion at the School of Infantry East at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Now, on August 26, 2021, during the chaotic evacuation of American forces from Kabul, a suicide bomber detonated himself in a crowd at one of the entry gates to the airport that was being guarded by American forces. 90 Afghan civilians were killed and 13 U.S. service members, 11 Marines, one sailor, and one soldier. The next day, the Wall Street Journal reported, quote, in the wake of the violence, General McKenzie, commander of the U.S. Central Command, told reporters the U.S. planned to continue with his evacuation of U.S. citizens and allied Afghans. Since August 14th, the day before the Taliban took Kabul and effectively solidified their control of Afghanistan, General McKenzie said the U.S. would continue to coordinate with the Taliban on security outside the airport gates, sometimes sharing information with the militant group. He said the group's fighters had been searching individuals en route the airport and that he didn't know how a suicide bomber was able to get through Taliban checkpoints, acknowledging a quote-unquote failure somewhere. So in the wake of the loss of those 13 service members, including 11 Marines, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller posted this video to his Facebook page. Not making this video because um, it's you know, potentially an emotional time, making it because I have a growing discontent and contempt for my perceived ineptitude at the foreign policy level, and I want to specifically ask some questions to some of my senior leaders. And I'll say, as a person that's not at 20 years, um, I feel like I have a lot to lose. If you play chess, you can only see two to three moves out because there's too many variables. I thought through if, if I post this video, what might happen to me, especially if the video picks up traction, if I have the courage to post it. But I think what you believe in can only be defined by what you're willing to risk. So if I'm willing to risk my current battalion commander's seat, my retirement, my family's stability to say some of the things that I want to say, I think it gives me some moral high ground to demand the same honesty, integrity, accountability from my senior leaders. And so I want to start with, we'll just use the Marine Corps, my We'll just stick with the Marine Corps. So in the current fallout of Afghanistan, a lot of Marines were posted on social media. And in response to that, the Commandant published a letter, which is the service chief of the Marine Corps. And I want to read from it. It was dated 18 August, so only a week ago. The Commandant, sir, you wrote, some of you may be struggling with a simple question. Was it all worth it? We want you to know that your service is meaningful, powerful, and important. You fought for the Marine to your left and the Marine to your right. You never let them down. And then you go on to say that, you know, if we're, we're struggling, we should we should seek counseling, which, you know, I get it. People have killed people. Um, I've killed people, and I, and I seek counseling, um, and that's fine. There's a time and place for that. But the reason people are so upset on social media right now is not because the Marine on the battlefield let someone down. That service member has always rose to the occasion and done extraordinary things. People are upset because their senior leaders let them down, and none of them are raising their hands and accepting accountability or saying, we messed this up. If an 05 battalion commander has uh, the simplest live fire incident EO complaint, boom, fired. But we have a secretary of defense that testified to Congress in May that the Afghan National Security Force could withstand the Taliban advance. We have chairmen of Joint Chief, who the commandant is a member of that, who's supposed to advise on military policy. We have a Marine combatant commander all of these people are supposed to advise, and I'm not saying we've got to be in, the, in Afghanistan forever, but I am saying, did any of you throw your rank on the table and say, hey, it's a bad idea to evacuate Bagram Airfield, the strategic air barriers, before we evacuate everyone? Did anyone do that? And when you didn't think to do that, did anyone raise their hand and say, we completely messed this up? I've got battalion commander friends right now that are posting similar things, and they're saying, you know, Wondering if it, all the lives were lost and, and if it was in vain, all those, all those people that we've lost over the last you know, 20 years. And he goes on to say that we're all part of a chain, 
while every link may not be tested, the strength of the chain is only as strong as each link, and you got to be, you know, good link, something like that. And what I'll say is, and from my position, potentially all those people did die in vain if we don't have senior leaders that own up and, and raise their hand and say, we did not do this well in the end. Without that, we just keep repeating the same mistakes, this amalgamation of the economic slash corporate slash political slash higher military ranks are not holding up their end of the bargain. I want to say this very strongly. I have been fighting for 17 years. I am willing to throw it all away to say to my senior leaders, I demand accountability. So I was made aware of that video by a Marine Corps junior officer who added that what Lieutenant Colonel Scheller says is how many Marines feel. They thought that the commandant sentiment about seek counseling and your service in Afghanistan wasn't a waste fell short of what they wanted to hear in the wake of this debacle. Also, all that did was tee up what they perceived to be a double standard of accountability. At the battalion level or the platoon level, if you have an accidental discharge of a firearm or somebody submits an EEO complaint, then people get fired on the spot, no questions asked. But as Lieutenant Colonel Scheller said, he watched and heard from his peers in theater about how this pullout was executed to a large degree of disaster. Yes, we got hundreds and thousands of people out, but we left a lot of equipment behind and it was not done in an organized fashion, let's be honest. And it's, it's inarguable that this lack of planning led to the deaths of those 13 service members. So in the face of all of that, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller is asking for accountability at the highest levels. Those in charge of planning the operation and advising the commander-in-chief as to the best way forward. And as Lieutenant Colonel Scheller says at the end of that particular video, he's been fighting for 17 years, he's willing to throw it all away to demand accountability. So I replied to this junior officer after watching the video, and I said, although I'm concerned about the medium that he's chosen, namely Facebook, I believe that Lieutenant Colonel Scheller was brave, sincere, and had the best interest of the Marine Corps at heart. And I hoped that that message had the intended effect. And then a day later, I got another Lieutenant Colonel Scheller video. Here are some of the highlights of that one. And I'm not a religious guy, and I don't know if it's the outpouring of people and all the support that I've had, but part of me feels like everything in the last 25 years of my life may have happened to, to bring me to this point right now whether it's my entrepreneurial success, whether it's my combat experiences, whether it's the people that I've had in my life, they've all played a part in my, my successes and failures have brought me to this moment. Currently, I am not pending legal action. Uh, I think the plan was to hide me away for three years, let an investigation take place, but not send me to a board of inquiry where they would have separated me on other than honorable conditions. And so I had the choice where I could remain silent, keep my retirement for three years, and quite honestly, uh, live the dream for not many responsibilities in terms of leaning into the next thing, if that's what I so chose. The other thing is in terms of donations, lots of people have set up GoFundMe pages and, and want donations and, and contribute to the cause because they're all, you know, want to believe in something. I'll tell you right now, I haven't set up a single GoFundMe and I'm not asking for any money uh, there'll be a time for that. If you want to donate, please donate to the families of the, the lost service members from the attacks over the last 72 hours. The only other pitch I'll give is after I post this video, uh, my wife, I love you. You're a great mother. You've been down for the cause of the last 17 years. I don't know what decisions you're going to make in the next 72 hours. Uh, if anyone does want to donate, I I'd ask that you just donate directly to her. Her, uh, we're not going to do GoFundMe's, just to clarify, there's no GoFundMe's for me or my family. But my wife's PayPal is Jacqueline, spelled J-A-C-K-L-Y-N, Scheller, spelled as my last name, at gmail.com, or her Venmo, Jacqueline-Scheller. When I was a young captain, I worked for a man named Lieutenant Colonel Hobbs. 
and we went through some things together and he, many people don't know, was actually relieved as an 06 for standing up for moral things that he thought was right and he did it within the system as a lot of people have implored me to do and he was just shuffled out the door without really affecting any change. And then after he exited the Marine Corps, he's made a lot of controversy by talking about racial diversity and um, equal opportunity problems in the Marine Corps. And from that respect, I have uh, adamantly disagreed with him. But just because we have different opinions doesn't mean I don't respect him. Sir, I, I love you like a father. And you made a comment on one of the posts in LinkedIn without giving anyone context of who you were or what our relationship was. And you said, if Stuart Scheller was honorable, he would resign his commission. Of all the noise going out there, that one comment has just played through my head. If Stuart Scheller was honorable, he would resign his commission. You didn't say is as if in challenging me you said was as if you assumed I wouldn't do it I want to make the announcement today after 17 years I'm currently not pending legal action and I could stay in the Marine Corps for another three years but I don't think that's the path I'm on I'm resigning my commission as a United States Marine, effective now, I'm sure there's some MAR admin on how I'm supposed to do that, and I'll work through that. But I am forfeiting my retirement, all entitlements. I don't want a single dollar. I don't want any money from the VA. I don't want any VA benefits. I'm sure I'm entitled to 100%. I, you know, breathed on the smell and smoke of burning shit for years. I don't want any of it. All I ask for was accountability of my senior leaders when there are clear, obvious mistakes that were made. I'm not saying we can take back what has been done. All I asked for was accountability, for people to comment on what I said and to say, yes, mistakes were made. And had they done that, I would have gone back into rank and file, submitted, and accomplished what I wanted. The morning after I posted my video and I came into work, my boss came in and he asked me, what were you trying to accomplish? And that was a very tough question for me. And my response was, I want senior leaders to accept accountability. I think them accepting accountability would do more for service members and PTSD and struggling with purpose than any other transparent piece of paper or message. And I haven't received that. For the over $2 million that I would potentially receive in retirement for the rest of my life, for the however much extra the disability would be. I think that money should go back to all the senior general officers because I think they need it more than I do. Because when I am done with what I'm about to do, you all are going to need the jobs and the security. Those people who are there every day and don't get to leave the next morning or in the middle of the night, who go outside the wire, get blown up, bring their Marine back, and then go back out there the next day, they don't get the credit they deserve, and they deserve accountability. If Stuart Scheller was honorable, he would resign. You have no idea what I'm capable of doing. Going after stability and money can make you a slave to the system, and it can make you compromise what you truly believe in. I don't need a single dollar. I just need every single person that's willing to go back outside the wire every single day to wear a blue collar and just go into work every single day and feed their families. Those are the people that I need. Follow me and we will bring the whole fucking system down. Well, as Ron Burgundy says. That escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. So this is a completely different atmosphere from the first one. He's in civvies in an abandoned bus in the wilds of North Carolina. Got a chessboard in front of him. That's sort of a illusion that he uses throughout some of his social media stuff. There's a Facebook page that always has a chessboard underneath his post. He mentions chess in the first video in terms of you can only see two moves ahead of yourself. 
with respect to his decision matrix that he's going through. So he mentions that he's grateful for the social media outpouring. And as a function of that, he has a sense that 25 years of his life have come to a different decision matrix. Also, and as a husband and provider myself, I'm not sure how good of a look this is. He says he doesn't want any donations, doesn't want any GoFundMe action, but he does put out his wife's PayPal and Venmo account information. He also mentions a mentor, a Lieutenant Colonel Hobbs, who apparently made a comment on social media about his honor, and if he had honor, dot, dot, dot. And Lieutenant Colonel Scheller takes great exception to that sentiment and basically summarily announces that he's resigning his commission, whatever Mar admins are in effect. He's going to do it kind of what seems to be a response to a de facto dare by this mentor, Lieutenant Colonel Hobbs. And then he ups the stakes with a threat to a couple of four stars, says, when I'm done with what I'm about to do, you all are going to need the jobs and security. And follows that by saying, you have no idea what I'm capable of. And then he goes from using a sniper rifle to a nuclear warhead with this call to action, which is, follow me and we will bring the whole system down. So suddenly this isn't about accountability over the Afghan pullout from SecDef, CENTCOM, Commandant of the Marine Corps, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Suddenly it's now follow me and we will bring the whole system down. So this is no longer oath of office, matrix of whether you can comply with the orders of those above you and resigning your commission. Now it's about a cultural revolution. And he mentions the Marines in the field and how they go beyond the wire every day. But then he opens the aperture of that thesis to include blue-collar workers. So this is now about something much bigger than simply the chain of command being accountable for decisions that they made. Another thing is he frames it as if all I wanted was some acknowledgement for my request that there be accountability. And he says, had I received that, I would have gone back and done my job, basically. I'm paraphrasing here. So... Having served on the staff of a three-star, I know that a four-star is like, hey, Colonel, you made a Facebook video. I'm not obliged to answer you through that means. If you want to talk to me, then there are other channels to get an office call or submit an article to the Marine Corps Gazette or Proceedings Magazine or come to a conference where I'm speaking, and when we have a Q&A, you can call me out. There are all kinds of ways that you can get an audience with me. Using Facebook or YouTube is not one of them. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. I'm just telling you there is no way that Lieutenant Colonel Schaller was going to get a reply using the mediums that he used solely. So that video was followed by a third one. Here are some highlights. Update on my legal situation. So the Marine Corps has offered me a very fair deal. Instead of court martial, they've offered me non-judicial punishment for violation of two articles. As long as I'm willing to resign my commission, give up my retirement, and accept a general discharge under honorable conditions, which is pretty fair. But there's, you know, the deal hasn't been signed. I haven't agreed to it, neither have they. And I acknowledge that making this video might destroy that deal. And if the Marine Corps after this video decides they want to go in a different direction, I'm prepared to go in that direction and see where it goes. Believe it or not, I don't want to start controversy. I didn't make it 17 years in the Marine Corps and as a battalion commander by saying whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. But as I sat here and looked at the fundamental changes that needed to take place in our key organizations, I just didn't see anyone else speaking up. To all the retired generals that wrote a very strongly worded letter to the current military establishment asking for resignations, I ask that those general officers show themselves, be prepared to give up their retirement and fight with me. If not, General Berger, sir, your pivot and transition to the next fight, I think is admirable and I think it's for all the right reasons. But I offer to you, if you can't hold senior leaders accountable, then it's all for nothing. You had a predecessor that talked about an awakening. He talked about the role of the commandant was to protect the very soul of the Marine Corps. 
but he focused on the NCOs, the NCOs that, in my opinion, have fought very bravely and valiantly for the last 20 years. I do believe there's an awakening that needs to take place, but it's not at the NCO level. It's at the general officer level, the people that are not being held accountable, the people that are leading this organization. And I ask that you use your leadership to use some introspection and look at the problems that are occurring. I'd also like to address General McKenzie. Sir, you made comments that are public record on August 31st that stated you made bad assumptions, that you left hundreds of Americans in Afghanistan, and then you itemized pieces of equipment that total hundreds of millions of dollars. I know you are a great American. I know you didn't intend to fail. I know you have served very honorably and are probably a great leader, but that doesn't absolve you from the accountability of your bad assumptions. I am announcing, well, I've read the entire UCMJ in the last two weeks of my purgatory and all the punitive articles, and it turns out that all military officers are subject to the UCMJ. It's because it appears to me that no general officers are willing to hold each other accountable. I am submitting charges against General McKenzie for his bad assumptions, not because I'm vindictive, but because the senior leaders need to be held accountable to the same standard as us. Additionally, I'm starting a foundation to raise money through the Pipe Hitter Foundation. We'll drop the link. It'll be live on Monday where people can donate to my family that's moving on to the next chapter. And also to raise legal fees for the legal argument I'm making against the CENTCOM commander. I love America. I love the Constitution. I love Americans. But we can't all be wrong. You only have the power because we allow it. All right, a few high points from that particular video. First, he gives an update on his legal situation, talks about some of the arbitration that he's doing against the Marine Corps or with the Marine Corps, some of the deals that uh, he's making, refers to the Marine Corps as, as them. And then he gives a call to action to retired general officers to join him, and then he mentions that they should forfeit their retirement. Well, the thing there is they're out of the military. They can say whatever they want. Unlike an active duty Marine Corps officer, once you retire, you can call for whatever you want. You can criticize Millie and McKenzie and Berger all you want without any repercussions. That's what that next three years was about, to get you to the position where you could do that with some financial stability, etc. But I respect a man of principle, so apparently Lieutenant Colonel Scheller's matrix is different than that. And then he talks to General Berger and kind of pits him against his predecessor, General Neller. That's I know both men. Trying to turn them against each other is a bad idea and will not yield anything along the lines of what Lieutenant Colonel Scheller imagines he's doing with that petition. Then Lieutenant Colonel Scheller mentions that he read the entire UCMJ before he announces that he's bringing charges against General McKenzie for, I guess, dereliction of duty. I, he doesn't specifically state what those are. He does mention that nobody's immune from the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And certainly that's true. But I have a couple of statements here from legal experts in the military. This was a quote from CENTCOM Air Force Major Nicole Ferrara, who said, although any person subject to the UCMJ may prefer charges, only a commander who has court-martial convening authority may refer those charges to a court-martial. And then an old friend of mine, Marine Lieutenant Colonel retired Gary Solis, who taught law at West Point, said service members have the right to make allegations of wrongdoing against other troops, not to charge them under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So process error there with how... Lieutenant Colonel Shelley has framed his legal charge against the CENTCOM commander, General McKenzie. So after the third video was posted and shared and got the same attention, maybe even more so than the first two did, the Marine Corps gave Lieutenant Colonel Scheller a direct order. And in response, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller posted this to his Facebook page. He talks about some higher truths like fear cannot exist in the pursuit of love and truth, 
He talks about what the consequences have been so far. Pulled the chain of retirement. I broke that chain. Then you pulled the chain of family stability. That chain also broke. Interesting how he uses the passive voice there. All you have left is the threat of court-martial. And then he quotes what the order was. Effective immediately upon your receipt below, you are hereby ordered to refrain from posting any and all material in any form without exception to any social media. In this context, the term quote-unquote social media shall be construed very broadly to include any medium by which you may share information with groups of people. It includes more traditional forms of social media, for example, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, as well as non-traditional methods one might use to circumvent established social media, for example, mass emails, group text messages, electronic bulletin boards. You are also prohibited from communicating through third parties or proxies. So that's the direct order. And in response, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller posts to Facebook again. And under that passage is a few ad hominem attacks against high-vis public officials, starting with President Trump. Let me read you what he wrote. President Trump, I was told by everyone to kiss the ring because you're following in power. I refuse. While I respect your foreign policy positions, I hate how you divided the country. I don't need or want your help. You do not have the ability to pull us together. And us is in all caps. You may even win the next election, but your generation's time is running out. Tell your son to stop tweeting about me. Your whole family knows nothing about us or our sacrifices. I could never work with you. I'd rather sit in jail and be released with a dishonorable than to make compromises in my beliefs. And then this about General Mattis is particularly personal. General Mattis, the warrior monk, we all know you became a monk because you are gay. To be clear, my generation does not care about sexuality. We are better than that. But our generation does care about honesty. You brought to my infantry officer course 106 what can only be described as a female prop. It was uncomfortable for all of us. As soon as you left, we all knew you were a liar. We were young but not stupid. Back then, don't ask, don't tell was still a policy. We understood why you lied. But as the policy was rescinded and we continued to hear the rumors, it bothered us that you kept up the lie. So very personal about General Mattis' sexuality. Then he goes after General Petraeus, counterinsurgency genius. We all know you went to Yale. We all know that you walked around the wars without PPE. That's personal protective equipment. But what if you used that education to offer insight on the ineffective nature of counterinsurgency? You led Iraq and Afghanistan because you were such an influential leader. However, history demonstrated you didn't have the insight of George Bush Sr., who knew when to pull out of a military campaign once the objectives were achieved. And he said at the end, but that would have marginalized the theory of your genius, and without your celebrity, there are no adulterous escapades. Again, an ad hominem personal attack. Then he goes after General Flynn. You gave interviews about me, pretending to understand me. You are the same as the rest. You were caught in a lie. My generation is sick of your lies. We are not the same. Stop speaking my name as if you understand me. You could never understand, all caps, us really agile between the me and the us and does not explain what us is, which I think refers back to the second video when he's talking about follow me and we will bring the whole system down. So obviously bigger aims here than simply getting accountability from the chain of command. So as a function of all of this social media activity to include videos and posts on Facebook, it's deemed to be a violation of the direct order given to him by the Marine Corps. So Lieutenant Colonel Scheller is put into pre-trial confinement in the brig in Camp Lejeune. And the Marine Corps brings four charges against him. So he's accused of violating the Uniform Code of Military Justice, Article 88, which is contempt towards officials. Article 90, willfully disobeying a superior commissioned officer. Article 92, failure to obey lawful general orders and Article 133, conduct unbecoming an officer and gentleman. So as this news emerged, his parents went on Fox News and pled for his release. Following that, a number of Republican lawmakers demanded that 
he be released from pretrial confinement. So some military experts have said that Congress demanding that sort of satisfaction from the military is disruptive to good order and discipline within various chains of commands. Kind of the same argument that was put forward when President Trump was intervening with the Navy SEALs on behalf of Chief Gallagher. Chief Gallagher, by the way, and his wife are the folks behind the Pipe Hitter Foundation, which was mentioned in the last Lieutenant Colonel Scheller video as the funding mechanism for his legal fight as well as support of his family. The military works for civilian authority. So if lawmakers or the president want answers at any point, then the military is obliged to give it to him. Now we'll see whether any of that releases him from pretrial confinement. At some level, I'm thinking, what are you guys afraid of? You know, he's out there making statements. Why don't you just fast track his resignation of his commission and, and make him a civilian? As far as Lieutenant Colonel Scheller's future, as a guy who's been associated with the Marine Corps for my entire life, as I've mentioned before, my father was a career Marine, retired as a colonel, brother was a Marine Corps staff sergeant, son is a Marine Corps reservist. I lecture at Expeditionary Warfare School and the Basic School often, love the Marine Corps, have a long association with the Marine Corps. So as a fellow 05, my heart breaks for this outcome for Lieutenant Colonel Scheller. He was right at the outset. And if there is any justice, whatever happens to him, I guarantee you a couple of things. First, his efforts as unorthodox and as reckless as they were will yield the introspection that he asks for. But it's a great cost. And by my calculus, and a guy who's used the other mechanisms to good effect, and who's also been at the elbow of three and four stars from time to time, I think the conventional means, which are time-tested, can be effective if used properly. Another thing, there's this general sense that NCOs and junior officers take the hit and flag and general officers can get away with anything. This is not true. I think if some of the flag and general officers that I know well and went to school with, served with, who have paid with their careers in recent years for things that went on that may or may not have been their fault. I think particularly of the two collisions at sea during the summer of 2017, the Pacific Fleet Commander, the ship boss, and the Seventh Fleet Commander were all fired. Arguably, those three were not responsible for what happened with McCain and the Fitzgerald. The Fat Leonard scandal ruined the careers of an entire generation of flag officers who had little to nothing to do with the crimes that were committed. And then you think of Captain Crozier on TR and the acting SECNAV who was fired as a function of that activity with the COVID outbreak aboard the aircraft carrier. None of these folks got off unscathed. So to paint with that broad brush, like junior folks get punished, senior folks get away with everything is not accurate. Now that having been said, what Lieutenant Colonel Scheller teed up with his first video and his first Facebook post were on target. That is the sentiment that is shared by a lot of folks in the Marine Corps right now. And the introspection that he calls for needs to be done. And I believe it will be done. One last thing in terms of will justice be served. Now, I have no idea how Lieutenant Colonel Scheller's trial is going to go. Maybe the Article 32 hearing will dismiss it altogether. You know, of these four charges, I think conduct unbecoming is a catch-all. The failure to obey a lawful general order is questionable because is it lawful to tell somebody that you can't go out on social media? I'm not sure that's a lawful order. Just like when I was told cease and desist when I was going on Fox News all the time, I could have fought it. Right? That wasn't a hill that I was willing to die on. But admittedly, I wasn't dealing with these matters of the heart and things that bother me to the degree that Lieutenant Colonel Scheller is bothered. So I respect that. So, but the last thing about justice is I guarantee you that the 06s and 07s in his chain of command 
will not make the next rank because what this is at the highest level is a failure of leadership, not leadership at the four-star level, but leadership at the battalion and brigade level. And if you read Lieutenant Colonel Scheller's entire Facebook post where he calls out Mattis, Petraeus, Trump, Obama, Flynn, he also calls out his immediate superior. And in there lives kind of a command atmosphere that seems toxic. So would he have reacted in a more productive way within the traditional means of affecting change had he had better leadership? My sense is yes. So I believe this is also the sense at the highest levels of the Marine Corps. Questions will be asked about how was Lieutenant Colonel Scheller led? And the answers will be unsatisfactory. So again, if there is justice in this matter, it may not come for Lieutenant Colonel Scheller directly, but the resonant effect of his actions will affect those whose careers should be affected because of Lieutenant Colonel Scheller's outlook and his frustration and also the sense that the only effective means to solve these problems was Facebook. There are other means and they are time tested and they work. I wish him the best. If you want to support him, I recommend you do use that Pipe Hitter Foundation because he's going to need the money. And maybe he'll emerge in the next chapter as a folk hero. You know, I mean, this is sort of like letter from a Birmingham County jail or whatever. You know, serve your time and then emerge like a phoenix from the ashes. He could be a real political force. But the other thing I'm going to say about that is I've been out of the Navy almost as long as I was in the Navy. I've had a lot of different jobs. I've been part of startups, corporations, government agencies. I've done kind of a wide variety of things. If you think accountability is bad in the United States Marine Corps, wait till you get a load of corporate America. All right, that'll do it for this episode. I look forward to talking to you again soon.